to Food You. We're your host. I'm Christina. And I'm Gabe. And it's almost Halloween. That's right. Coming up. And so this week we're going to make some things that would be good to eat in the fall of the year and some things that would be good to have on hand maybe while trick-or-treaters are coming up to the door and you can just go get something and nibble and come back and keep it on the stove that way. Sounds good. So we're making your famous beanie weenies. The grown-up version. Not just straight out of a can, but you're actually putting it all together, right? <laughs> some, some is out of a can. And <laughs> some, we're, we're just making our own recipe, our own take on beanie weenies. And then what are you making, Christina? I'm going to make a coleslaw to go with it and also some jalapeno cornbread. And then we're going to show you how to make these cute little candy sacks for the trick-or-treaters. And we'll have the printables for those available online. And we'll tell you more about that later. Okay. And as always, we're thankful to be coming to you from the Union County Agricultural Center in the Demonstration Kitchen. And so thank you to those folks. Yes. So what are we doing first? First thing we're going to do is saute some onions and some bacon together to go into our beanie weenies. And I'm going to start that now. Cool. So you have thick cut bacon here? I have thick cut bacon here, yes. And uh, one sweet onion, relatively small onion. So at the house that I grew up in, mostly when I was little, and my parents still live there, we have ridiculous numbers of trick-or-treaters. People come to the neighborhood and park and walk around by the hundreds, probably thousands, and I'm being totally serious. <laughs> so um, we have to have a lot of candy, and Mama always buys like Dum Dums and Smarties, no chocolate, because it's so, so much. And that's, Halloween candy is expensive. I bought some today and I bought pretty much the same thing, and Tootsie Pops. Are those so, for your trick-or-treaters? I'm sorry? Are those for your trick-or-treaters? No, where I live now, I'll probably have about 50 trick-or-treaters, and I'm gonna give those kids the chocolate. So I'm gonna get like fun-sized candy bars. But anyway, back in the day, Daddy would make beanie weenies at Halloween, and we thought it was delicious, and so that's why I'm doing that today. Did you, do your cornbread or coleslaw have any family history? Nope. I just thought it would go well with beanie weenies. It will. Christina's been doing a lot of genealogy research in her family. I don't know why I said <laughs> that, cause I think because we were talking about family tradition. Yeah, finding out lots of cool things, but nothing about... Mm -hmm. Halloween eating tradition. So if you're uh, frying up some bacon, you don't have to put any oil or anything in the pan because that bacon's got plenty of oil in it. And we're going to let this stuff uh, cook up and reduce down a little bit. I'm going to rinse my hand off. Excuse me. Okay. Sounds good. What did you dress up when you were little? What did you dress up as when you were little? I think the first costume I remember was an M&M. M&M uh -huh. the rapper? No, <laughs> like a chocolate M&M. I think mom, mom took a cardboard box and cut armholes in it and painted a big M&M on the front, and that was, that was my costume. Gotcha. What about you? My very first Halloween, I was a bunny rabbit. <laughs> uh, I don't know this. I only know this because I saw pictures. I don't remember that, but they said that I didn't want anything on me, on my head, or anywhere. <laughs> And so they slipped a pair of bunny rabbit ears on me. A few years later, trick or treating with Same my. Same pair of ears? No. I'm no, I think, I don't know. I was probably <laughs> like Oscar the Grouch from Sesame Street. Hmm. But anyway, Daddy was walking us around. Yeah, that's right. Daddy was walking <laughs> us around the neighborhood, and he noticed that he looked back, and I was no longer with him. <laughs> and what had happened was is that I fell in a ditch. Seriously? Yep. And so he came and found me, and we kept on trick-or-treating. Uh, I, I also remember trick or, or Halloween was like, people went crazy. People lost their minds. And would like egg houses and roll houses. and Fall in ditches. Yeah, fall in ditches. Oh, I've got another story, but I feel like I'm telling too many stories right now. I'll tell it later in the show involving my grandma. Okay, we'll look forward to that one. Were you going to get some bread going or did I? I am. Okay. <laughs> I was going to wait for that to start cooking. So 
we'll get started on our jalapeno cornbread. If you want to follow me over here, so super simple recipe. We're going to use a cup and a half of cornmeal and a half cup of flour. And for exact measurements, you can always find our recipes on our Facebook page under Wingate Food U. And then we're going to add a couple, I think a half cup sugar, and we're going to whisk that up until it's nice and blended. You don't even need a mixer for this recipe, Gabe. Oh. Super easy. Just What makes it different that way? It doesn't have to be whipped like a cake or bread would be or kneaded. You just have to blend it and stir it up. Okay. So we've got that in there, and now we're going to add a cup and a half of milk right into the middle of that. Into the milk, we're going to add two eggs. There's one. There's two. And I'm going to kind of whisk that just a little bit before I add my butter to mix the eggs up. There we go. Now we're going to add six tablespoons of melted butter. You can melt that in your microwave for about 30 seconds. And then here I have a little salt, pepper, and baking powder that's going to go in. Did you say bacon powder? Bacon powder. Baking. Ah. Not bacon. I got excited for a second. <laughs> yes. So we're going to blend that up. Mm. You like that? Mm -hmm. Oh, will you do something for me? It depends on what it is. I have some pickled jalapenos over there. Mm -hmm. Do you want to open the jar up and put a few of those in here? Okay. So we're going to stir this up till it's nice and blended. Do we want to chop these up at all? Um, you can. I think you could do it either way. Let's do them whole. Okay. Sounds good. Let's do about a quarter cup of them. I'm throwing them in one at a time so that they <laughs> get kind of mixed up, evenly dispersed. I'll stir them in. <laughs> so to that, we're also going to stir in two-thirds cup of corn. And you can use frozen corn that's been thawed, or you can use canned corn that's been drained. Now, a person might ask, Christina. Yes, Gabe? Why are you putting corn? Well, it kind of does make sense. <laughs> in the cornbread. Yeah. <laughs> Because it gives it some extra taste in and another texture. Te exactly. Yes. It's just good. It makes it more hearty. Chunky. <laughs> chunky. That's all right. And those peppers are going to make it nice and chunky Hot. and spicy. I like the pickled peppers because they're a little bit more tame than the fresh ones. But Tangy? Uh, tame. So you could definitely go fresh if you wanted to, but I think the pickled are a little more mellow. I think that's good. Okay. Thank you very, very much. All right, so let's see. We're gonna, I'm gonna grab a spoon and we're gonna put this into a muffin tin that's been sprayed with a nonstick spray. You don't wanna use liners, cupcake liners, because the muffin batter will stick to the liner. So just plain grease pan, it'll give you nice brown edges. And I'm gonna pop these in here and we'll check and see how Gabe's doing with the beanie weenies over there. It's going fine over here, and I would say, why don't we take a break, and we'll be back right after these messages. Your extraordinary future begins at Wingate University. With more than 35 undergraduate majors and graduate and professional programs in the health sciences, business, and education, Wingate University's enrollment has mushroomed and construction has skyrocketed in the past two decades. And Wingate is the sixth best value in the South, according to U.S. News & World Report. Most importantly, Wingate graduates get jobs. They're working all over the Carolinas and the U.S. Major in a great life at Wingate University. Welcome back. So I've sizzled up this bacon and these onions. Mm -hmm. And now, the reason I did that, and I guess it's personal preference, but I didn't want the onions to be all loud when they're in the beanie weenies. It's just kind of mellow them out a little bit. I like that. And same, and to cook the bacon a little bit. I've done it before with putting raw bacon in, and it doesn't really cook. It kind of stays soft. Boils more than like crispy, crispified. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So I'm going to pour, uh, I'm going to put 
strain these, strain this so that we keep the grease out or, or try to. So I'm gonna. That's a good idea. And some people like to use the grease. You could do it in one pot and let it go and use it for flavoring. Mm -hmm. We're trying to be a little more healthful and strain yeah. some of the grease out. And I think just the consistency of the binti, win binti winties would be better <laughs> without the grease in. Sounds good. So Smells good. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So that and then okay. that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. Put them in this pot. And this is where the beanie weenies will live and simmer out. And I've already turned it on. I'm going to keep it on a low. Uh, so now I'm going to maybe throw some beans in. I've got in the, the bean is all up to you. You could use dry beans and cook them beforehand or maybe figure out some way to do it all in one pot and let them cook. I don't know, but this is meant to be convenient, and so we're just using canned beans. So a can of kidney beans, pinto beans, good for your heart. <laughs> and did you drain these? I drained the beans. I, I was going to use some black beans too, but Christina told me not to. Why? It just doesn't sound good together. Doesn't sound I don't good know. Together. Black beans, pinto beans. Yep. Mm -mm. So the beans are in, I'm going to stir that up a little bit. And this really becomes kind of put in what you like or what you think would make it taste good. So for me, that's some ketchup. And this is all, I don't know, I guess in general maybe a third of a cup, half a cup, something like that. Mm -hmm. And we'll have an exact recipe for you online so that you can follow one if you're not comfortable eyeballing it. Mm -hmm. Some yellow mustard. And we'll mix all this up. A little barbecue sauce. That's my favorite. This kind? No, but barbecue sauce and beanie weenie. Mm -hmm. Or baked beans. Mm -hmm. Another story I was going to tell about Halloween and my grandma. So each year before we would, I have two younger brothers, each year before we would trick or treat, we would go over to grandma's house. That would be our first stop so she could see our costumes. <laughs> and, but she started doing this thing where we, when we went in, she left the door unlocked and we would go in and all the lights were off and like she wasn't, didn't come to the door. And so we would have to sneak around like, creep around and find her and when we did she would scare us and she she would always wear like a homemade costume and those were even more scary because it was so weird you like you never knew what to expect and uh anyway that was that was fun each year what was she dressed up as like she would wear like i don't know some kind of mask and then like a bathrobe and then maybe like hold a broom <laughs> or like a kitchen spoon like it was but it was scary because you never knew what was going to happen <laughs> Yeah. And then, uh, and then we had these neighbors who, you know, they would give the candy out. Right. But when they, when it was us, they would give us a special candy bag, probably like what you're gonna make later. But we had to make sure they knew it was us. So we're like, hey, it's us. Uh, like it's Gabe. And give me the would, good candy. They would give us a special <laughs> candy. Sounds good. All right, enough of that. Um, hot sauce. I like hot sauce. We'll put a little bit in. And again, that can you use any hot sauce? Any hot sauce. So whatever your preference is. Mm -hmm. I like that kind. I like the Cholula also. Mm -hmm. That has good flavor. A whole grain mustard, just uh, for taste, but also just maybe a little texture. Some of that in. Again, about a quarter to a third cup. Mm -hmm. And then probably needs, I don't know, I haven't tasted it yet, but a little salt and pepper. We maybe could wait to the end to do this, but we'll go ahead and put some in. Okay. And how can I forget the winties? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I use like a kielbasa or something like that. Mm -hmm. Here I've got turkey weenies, and it's a whole pack, so I'm gonna chopping things up and put them in. What were you about to say? You know, I don't remember. But again, with the, with the hot dogs, you could use any kind of meat like this that you wanted to. I think we've made them before with vegetarian hot dogs. Um, 
I go through phases where I don't like to eat a whole lot of meat, so you can do it without bacon. You can do vegetarian beans with vegetarian hot dogs, and it's throw some peppers in there, green peppers, onions. You can really tailor it to meet your food wants or your food likes. Are you saying hot dogs? <laughs> hot dogs. Hot dogs. How do you say it? Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Okay. Hot dogs. Stop. All right. <laughs> All right, so... I'm gonna rinse my hands and I'm gonna stir it up. All right, sounds like, good. Yeah. So while you're giving that a stir, I think my oven has preheated and I'm gonna pop these corn muffins in the oven real quick. There's the beeper. Mm. So these are gonna go in, these are gonna go in a 425 degree oven for about 20 minutes. There we go, and we'll check those in about 20 minutes. And how are those going? Good. Good. My mouth is watering, but oh. not in the pot. <laughs> Uh-oh, dropped a bean. Okay. So I think we're gonna get these blended up and let them heat up and simmer a little bit and take a break, you want to? Yeah. Sounds good, and when we come back, we'll check on those and make some coleslaw. Planning your next step in life? Come complete your education in a dynamic, caring environment at Wingate University. Enrollment and construction have skyrocketed in the past two decades as students pursue challenging and rewarding degrees in fields like the health sciences, business, and education. U.S. News & World Report has named Wingate University the sixth best value in the South. Visit one of our three great campuses, Wingate, North Carolina, Hendersonville, or Charlotte, or check us out at wingate.edu. Major in a great life at Wingate University. Now, the beanie weenies are simmering, the cornbread's in the oven. Yep. And looks like you got some coleslaw ready to go. I do, we're ready. So, pretty simple coleslaw, basic recipe. We're gonna do the mayonnaise version instead of vinegar slaw. Okay. It's my preference. So, <laughs> um, six cups of cabbage is what you need, and you can find it in these great pre-shredded bags, or about a half a head of cabbage if you wanna cut it yourself. And I like to mix the green with the red. So we're going to pour the cabbage here in the bowl, and again that's about six cups or one bag. And then to add a little extra texture and vegetable, we're going to add about a cup of shredded carrots. And you can find these again at the grocery store pre-shredded. They may be called matchstick carrots. And that's a whole lot easier than grating, but you could definitely do it with a grater or if you have a food processor, you could just whirl cabbage and carrots through that. So that's ready to go, and we're gonna make our dressing real quick. It's a little bit of mayonnaise, quarter cup of sugar, quarter cup of white wine vinegar. There we go. And a little salt, pepper, and celery seed is the magic ingredient. So we're gonna sprinkle that in and give that a stir. Doesn't that look delicious? What? <laughs> dressing. Hmm. <laughs> I'm being silly. I don't think it does until it's on it. All right. So there we go. That's all stirred up. And we're going to pour it over our cabbage and give it a nice stir. I like the vinegar and the way it smells on coleslaw, even in the mayonnaise kind. Most recipes call for a little bit more mayonnaise. I like to go a little bit light on it because I don't like it so creamy that it's swimming in it. Uh -huh. But just incorporate that real good. Give it a big stir. And that's our super easy coleslaw ready to go. How are the bean weenies doing? They're good. How are the muffins doing, I wonder? We have about five more minutes left. Okay. So. so maybe we'll come back later and do the candy. Take a quick break and when we come back we'll show you how to make those little candy bags and then we'll plate up our beanie weenies and corn muffins and we'll be ready to party. Party. What is Wingate? 
a thriving university nestled in a quiet community near Charlotte. Named sixth best value in the South by U.S. News & World Report. Leading the way in the health sciences with pharmacy, PA studies, and nursing. What is Wingate? Big enough to offer 22 NCAA sports. Small enough to attract the best and brightest in the world. What is Wingate? Wingate is you. Wingate University, major in a great life. Bread's still in the oven and the beanie weenies are still simmering and we're going to show you how to make these cool candy bags. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So these are a great idea if you're having a Halloween party or if you're passing out candy to trick-or-treaters and maybe you don't want them grabbing 10 pieces out of your bucket, you can hand them one of these cute little treat sacks. Mm -hmm. And these are made with plain sandwich bags and a piece of cardstock. And we'll have these available on our Facebook page. You can download them if you want to. But it's just a plain plain piece of paper that you print on and you cut it out. Probably better to do a thick paper. Yeah, I did use cardstock. Um, you cut it out and then you fold it in half and you put it over the baggie full of candy or cookies or whatever you're making and staple it and you're done. And they're super cute and super easy to make. So, so. why don't we do one? Yes. We'll make a couple. Do we need scissors? Nope. Okay. Isn't that beautiful? I have some already cut and folded and ready to go. So when you have your trick-or-treaters, um, one thing I like to recommend is that you make them say trick-or-treat. <laughs> some will just walk up and open their bags mm -hmm. and expect you to put candy in it. But you should make them say trick-or-treat and make them get the candy out of your bucket. I don't think that. No. Okay. Well, at least say, make them say trick or treat. <laughs> I agree with that. Also, make them say thank you. Yeah. Um, that's how I roll. And last year at trick or treating at, at trick or treating time at Halloween, I opened the door and this girl just walked up in my in my place. Oh, I remember that. And she kind of looked around. and I was like, Oh, okay. Well, you need to get back outside. <laughs> she and smelled your beanie weenies cooking and liked what was on your TV. Mm -hmm. So don't let them walk in your house. <laughs> And then these are uh, good tips, Gabe. Thank you. <laughs> and then also at my parents' house, they have so many trick or treaters, and some of them are just like they're like, my sister's sick at home, and here's her bag, or my, you know, whatever. And some of them, if your if your trick or treaters are smoking cigarettes <laughs> at your door, they're probably too old to be trick or treating. I would stand by that statement. So what are you putting? I see you're going, you're high rolling with all this chocolate. I know. I know. These are very, these are premium bags. These are for the neighbor's children. These are, yes. <laughs> or your own children. Yeah. So I put a few candy bars in each of these and then thrown in a few little minis, kisses, Reese cups, Rolos. Reese's cups. Reese's? No. Reese's. Reese's? Reese's. A lot of people Always. say Reese's. <laughs> Reese's. Or Reese. <laughs> Okay, Reese's cup. Reese's. Do you want to do one of these? Okay, why don't I hold it while you staple it? I'm good. <laughs> Here, I'll show you. Go ahead. So I tuck this one down. I just tuck it down just a little bit. Yep. And then put the thing over it. That way it's right up on the candy. Mm -hmm. And then take a stapler and do one staple on either side, if I can staple. Ah. I'll do it. Okay. Of course. Will you do this one then? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And there you go. Cute little Halloween treat set. And you can put them in a basket and have them ready to give out as either your favorites or to your trick-or-treaters. Great. Well, why don't we take one last break, and then we'll be back with the coleslaw, the muffins, the beanie weenies, ready to eat. And maybe one more story. We'll see you in a few. Your extraordinary future begins at Wingate University with more than 35 undergraduate majors and graduate and professional programs in the health sciences, business, and education. Wingate University's enrollment has mushroomed, and construction has skyrocketed in the past two decades. 
and Wingate is the sixth best value in the South, according to U.S. News & World Report. Most importantly, Wingate graduates get jobs that are working all over the Carolinas and the U.S. Major in a great life at Wingate University. Our corn muffins are done and you can see by not using the cupcake liners they got a nice brown edge all around them they're nice and crispy you want to open one up super hot go for it it's hot <laughs> so you can see the pieces of corn and the jalapenos inside it's really good i think it would be good crumbled up inside the beanie weenie mm -hmm. yep for okay. sure why don't you put that on your plate I am. and i'm going to dish up some slaw and just a reminder, you can find all of these recipes on our Facebook page, and you can find the printable download for these little tags on our page as well. And again, we want to thank the Union County Agricultural Center and the Demonstration Kitchen here for letting us use this facility. We always appreciate it. Yes, very much. Whoops, got a little bit of that. So we're gonna enjoy some beanie weenies and some coleslaw and some jalapeno corn muffins. Yep. and wait for our trick-or-treaters. Happy Halloween, everybody. See you next time.